In lesson 22, you state what separates super successful people from the average person is their ability to think bigger. Right. So share an example of that and the title of your book, sure. of course. So the title came from one of the chairs. I mentioned we have 40 groups and each group is led by a professional who is a facilitator, but part of our team and they carry the title of chair. And the chair of our Washington DC chapter, which has two groups is Cal Simmons, who himself is a serial entrepreneur. He's one of the most important entrepreneurs in the travel industry. And uh, he's Mr. Venture Capital in uh, Washington. And uh, what he observed was that although he's a very successful uh, entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, there's different levels of success. And uh, whatever his level of success is, he always was trying to understand why some other people were just dramatically more successful. And he, you know, he told the story that when he built his first travel agency, um, that was it. He, like, he'd arrived, he'd got there, and a friend came in and said, Cal, this is great, where are you going to open your second location? And he said, I never even thought about a second location. I was so focused on getting one location that when that person said a second location, my first reaction is like, are you out of your mind? And it kind of aided him. And all of a sudden, he started thinking about a second location. And that was the little switch that went from two locations to three, and then ultimately 10, and eventually sold the business. And one of the things that uh, I learned from my partner, David, you know, doing a big deal is just as hard as doing a small deal. Some people would say it the other way around and they both have meeting. Doing a small deal is just as hard as doing a big deal. The difference is if you're successful with a big deal, you make a lot more money. And there's what I find with um, most people have limits of imagination. They either have limits of a skill. They don't like having a lot of people working around them. They have limits of capacity. They can only work so many hours. They have limits of imagination, whatever those. The, the really successful entrepreneurs are part of a group of people because there's others with equal skills that just didn't have the luck to be successful who were always thinking bigger. They just, the minute they reach one goal, before they even got to that goal, they're thinking about the next goal. And I think one of the surprises that most people have is, um, you know, when you look at Madonna on the stage or Mick Jagger, or if you remember Nadia Comaneci, the, oh, the yeah, gymnast. Yeah. 1976. In, in all of these professions, the best people make it look so simple that what you don't realize is behind the scenes, the level of discipline and hard work that it takes. You know, entrepreneurs, Mark Zuckerberg is learning uh, Chinese and he's writing this. These things don't happen by themselves. The level of discipline that entrepreneurs have and the hard work behind the scenes is the, the hidden part of, of being an entrepreneur. And that all fits into sort of what we're unraveling by looking at the book and saying, what does it really take to be a great entrepreneur? And one of them is either forcing yourself, but with some people it comes naturally, you got to think bigger or you're just going to get stuck in the mediocrity of all of your competitors.